Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and uh, in this particular video I want to focus on the uh, function of the pancreas uh, in the last video uh, in the last uh, couple of videos uh, I was telling you about the uh, different components of the uh, digestive system uh, and their functions uh, we talked about the uh, function of the tongue uh, and then we talked in detail about the function of the pharynx then the uh, esophagus uh, then the stomach, uh, then the small intestine and in this particular video I want to focus on the function of an important gland uh, which have an important role in the process of the digestion and that is pancreas. Now when you talk about the pancreas uh, it is uh, actually a compound gland uh, by that I mean uh, that it is composed of both the exocrine and the endocrine tissue so it is uh, performing like two kinds of the uh, functions it have got the exocrine functions as well as the endocrine functions and therefore we call the pancreas as a compound gland uh, when you talk about the pancreas it is going to release the uh, digestive enzymes into the gut and it also secretes the hormones the insulin and the glucagon so this uh, release of the digestive enzymes that is actually the uh, exocrine part of the pancreas and the insulin and the glucagon they are actually the endocrine part uh, or they are released by the endocrine part of the uh, pancreas and these hormones like the insulin and the glucagon they have got uh, a vital importance in the metabolism of the carbohydrates now in human the uh, pancreas it actually uh, weighs approximately 80 gram and it is shaped like a pear now it is located in the uh, upper abdomen with the head lying immediately adjacent to the duodenum and the body and the tail extending across the midline nearly to the spleen. Uh, that means that the uh, pancreas have got three parts, the tail, the body and then the head. And if you can see this head is actually present uh, near to the duodenum while the uh, tail that is actually present uh, close to the uh, pancreas. So the uh, pancreas actually have got these uh, three parts, the tail, the uh, body uh, and the head. Now in adults most of the uh, pancreatic tissue that is devoted to the exocrine functions and the exocrine function of the pancreatic tissue is to release the uh, digestive enzymes uh, through the pancreatic ducts into the duodenum. If you look at it here, uh, if you see these uh, green uh, lines or green tubes over here, these are actually the pancreatic ducts that is they are very clear in this particular image and the uh, exocrine part of the pancreas when they release the digestive enzymes they are actually released into the duodenum through these pancreatic ducts and this is actually showing that if the secretions are released into the target with the help of the ducts the function is exocrine in nature or this is the uh, exocrine part of the pancreas so through the uh, pancreatic ducts the exocrine part of the pancreatic tissue is releasing the enzymes into the uh, duodenum. Now a large main duct uh, which is known as the uh, duct of Weyerson that actually collect the pancreatic juices and they empty them into the duodenum. Now in many individuals there is also a smaller duct which is known as the uh, a duct of Santorini that also empty into the duodenum. But the simple meaning is that all of the secretions of the pancreas the exocrine part of the pancreas are those secretions with the help of these uh, ducts they are released into the uh, duodenum part over here as you can see over here all of these tubes they will be released all of the secretions will be released into, into the duodenum uh, through these tubes and then they are released into the duodenum because the endocrine uh, because the uh, digestive enzymes are present so they are going to help you in the process of the digestion now the cells in the pancreas that produces the uh, digestive enzymes they are called is the SNR cells. Now why they are called as the SNR cells is that this term uh, SNS actually means grab in Latin. So it's so named because the cell aggregates that form the bundles that resemble a cluster of the grabs. And if you can see over here these are the SNR cells and when you amplify them you actually see that this is actually uh, a cluster of the grabs. Therefore, they are known as the uh, SNR cells. So the SNR cells, they are the exocrine part of the pancreas 
and they are going to release the pancreatic enzymes which are digestive in nature into the duodenum and that is going to help you in the process of the uh, digestion uh, so the enzymes they can be uh, proteases are there the lipases they are there and the uh, amylases they are also there so they will be released into the duodenum to help in the process of the digestion now when you talk about the second part of the pancreas which is actually the endocrine part of the pancreas so located between the cluster of these SNR cells there are scattered patches of another type of secretory tissue which are known as the islet of the Langerhans so collectively uh, all of these uh, patches that are scattered between the SNR cells they are known as the islet of Langerhans and they are so named uh, after the uh, German pathologist uh, the Paul Langerhans now the uh, the islet of the Langerhans for short you can call them the islets they actually carry out the endocrine function of the pancreas and they account only for about one to two percent of the pancreatic tissue so it is only occupying a very small portion of the total pancreatic tissue now in the normal human pancreas there are about one million islets and the islets consist of four different types of the cells one they are known as the alpha the first type you have got the beta cells you have got the uh, delta cells and the alpha beta and delta they are going to produce important hormones that you will see in a while uh, there is also another type of the cells the fourth component which are known as the c cells but the function of the c cells is not uh, very much clear but the functions of the alpha the beta and the delta cells in the production of the hormones and hence their function that is very clear that you will see in a while now these uh, pancreatic tissue uh, which have got the endocrine function they actually produce the hormones and these hormones are directly released into the blood uh, when you talk about the uh, blood uh, as you all know that the endocrine uh, the endocrine hormones they are released into the blood they utilize the blood as a media for the uh, release of the uh, so that they can reach their targets so the first type of the cells they are known as the uh, alpha cells the function of the alpha cell is to produce the glucagon and the uh, alpha cell that actually occupy about 15 to 20 percent of the total islet cells uh, now glucagon what the glucagon hormone do is that that is going to raise the blood glucose level by stimulating the liver to convert its glycogen into the glucose what this means is that during fasting or if the food is not available and the blood glucose level drops what the glucagon do is that that is going to act on the liver the liver have got the uh, storage form of the glucose which is known as the glycogen so the glucagon is uh, directing the liver to convert its glycogen into the glucose and that glucose can be used as an energy source when the food source or the readily food is not available the most important part of the uh, endocrine part of the pancreatic tissue that is known as the beta cells and the beta cell produces two important enzymes one is the insulin and the other one that is the myelin and the beta cells they occupy about 65 to 80 percent of the total islet cells it means that majority of the islet cells they are of the uh, beta nature now what the uh, insulin do is it is going to lower the blood glucose level by stimulating cell to take up glucose out of the bloodstream so when you are in a well fed state or you have taken your meal in that particular case your blood glucose level is going to uh, is going to be very high what the insulin is doing that that is going to uh, that is going to transfer the excess glucose in your blood into different kind of the cells liver will be one of the example so when the excess glucose that moves into the uh, liver that glucose will be converted into the glycogen which is the storage form of the glucose so the function of the insulin that is very much opposite to that of the functions of the glucagon so it is going to lower the blood glucose level by stimulating cells to take up the glucose out of the bloodstream the function of the amylin is that it slows the gastric emptying thereby preventing the spikes in the blood glucose level so if the gastric emptying process is very fast that means that blood glucose level is going to be very high 
or you you can actually have very high spikes in the blood glucose level so the amylin it's actually responsible for slowing down the gastric emptying thereby preventing the spikes in the blood glucose level so the insulin as i've told you it is going to uh, prevent the release of the glucose by the liver because you have already got high glucose level in your blood it can also cause the muscle cells to take up the amino acids the basic component of the protein and it is also responsible for inhibiting the breakdown and release of the fats because you have already got much blood uh, much glucose in your blood and you have got a lot of energy that can be used by the uh, body to perform their physiological functions so one type is the alpha cell which produces the glucagon the other one is the beta cell which produces the insulin and the myelin and the function of the glucagon and the insulin that is opposite of each other and uh, the combined action of the glucagon and the insulin is going to make it sure that your blood glucose level that remains in the homeostatic uh, quantities now the release of the insulin from the beta cells that can be triggered by growth hormones for example the somatotropin that can also be uh, that can also be released by the uh, glucagon but the most important stimulator of the insulin that is the glucose itself because when the blood glucose level increases for example after a meal the insulin is going to get released now the inability of the islet cells the to make insulin that means the inability of the beta cells to make the insulin or the failure to produce uh, amount sufficient to the blood glucose level that is responsible for causing the diabetes mellitus the third type of the cell they are known as the uh, delta cells and the function of the delta cell is to produce another hormone which is known as the somatostatin uh, the delta cells they produce about uh, 3 to 10% of the total either cells and the somatostatin is a hormone that suppresses the release of other hormones made in the pancreas especially the insulin and the glucagon another type of the cell they are known as the gamma cells they produce the uh, pancreatic polypeptide and these pancreatic polypeptides they are responsible for regulating both the endocrine and the exocrine uh, pancreatic secretions the gamma cells they are going to make about 3 to 5% of the uh, total either cells uh, another type of the cells uh, they are known as the epsilon cells they are going to produce the hormone which is known as the ghrelin and the function of the ghrelin is to stimulate hunger and the epsilon cells they actually constitute about 1% of the uh, total uh, islet cells so as you see that the pancreas is actually the endocrine part of the pancreas is producing a lot of hormones and the combined actions of all of these hormones is actually uh, making the process of the digestion uh, you can say uh, it is actually helping the process of the digestion so if you like the video please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends